Hello? Meredith, Steve. Uh, hope I didn't wake you up. I just came home and was wondering if everything worked out all right. Hi, Steve. Yes, we made the deadline. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, I feel so bad you couldn't make it. Hope you guys had a nice Labor Day party. Oh, yes. I mean, the band was great, and Mike fell in the pool. <laughs> oh, and then Roy got really sick. No, wait. Brian. And then he fell in the pool, too. And... No, Roy. Uh, wait. Ah, well, I'll tell you all about it at work tomorrow more. Well, <laughs> afternoon. I, I won't be there for two weeks, remember? Oh, wait. Yeah, but, uh... Do you really have to? <laughs> Two weeks is a lifetime. Yeah, Steve, I really have to. But I will continue testing for Adit. Oh, okay, right. Awesome. Um, you know, I better get some sleep now. My plane leaves early in the morning. Okay, Meredith. Have a wonderful flight. I, I'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much for picking me up, Mr. Coleman. Mr. Coleman? Please, just call me Frank. We're colleagues now, after all. Well, okay, Frank. Thanks so much for making time for me on Labor Day. No problem, Meredith. Postal workers always have each other's back. Your dad helped me dozens of times whenever I was in a bit of a pickle. Well, I hope I can fill his shoes. He hardly ever missed a day. I'm sure you'll do great. You know what? While we're en route, why don't we deliver some mail in our beautiful little lake town? And show me the ropes? Sure. All right then, get ready to roll. lake. It's always more beautiful than I remember it. I don't think I'll ever get tired of driving around it. And there's our first stop. Okay, sir. What's the plan? Delivering mail is like a walk in the park with mailboxes. Take this bag, walk to the mailbox, and insert the mail. Just take your time, Miss Weiss. They never start a game until Frank Coleman has turned on his TV. Nothing too difficult, right? I think I should be able to face the challenge. <laughs> I bet. Didn't you go to MIT? Yeah. I left here from Massachusetts uh, 22 years ago. Shouldn't you get a job in computers then? That's really booming right now. Well, actually, I'm... Uh... Hold that thought. We just arrived at our next address. It's a package this time, so you'll have to get it out of the back. That's lighter than I thought. Hmm. Well, I guess nobody's home. That's the last of them.
you're getting the hang of it. So, where were we? Computers. Should I buy one? Uh, well, it depends on what you want to use it for. Bookkeeping. I always make a mess of my tax returns. Can't a computer do that for me? Sure, there are programs for that. But you'll still have to put in some work yourself. I was afraid you were going to say that. I'll bug you about it another time. Our next address is right around the corner. Ah, there's no place like home. Sure isn't. Can't wait to get home either. The Mets are playing the Giants. Oh, before I get out, what time do I start tomorrow? 7 a.m. sharp. Just check in at the post office. Okay, Frank. See you tomorrow. Adios. Hi, Meredith. I just wanted to let you know that Dad and I landed safely. <sighs> the Florida weather is all they said it would be. I'll call again soon. Oh, oh, one more thing. The freezer's stuffed with food and there's blueberry pie in the fridge. Bye. Meredith, it's Steve. I didn't get the chance to say it earlier, but thanks so much for being a trooper. I know you had other plans for Labor Day weekend, but nailing the deadline for added 87 could very well be the most important milestone in our company's history. Enjoy your well-deserved time off. Don't get too used to it. Just kidding. Or am I? Uh, I'll talk to you later. Good morning, Meredith. Ready for your first day? Good morning, Frank. Ready to rock. It's a great day to be on the road. I already filled up the mailbag in the truck, so you're good to go. Oh, I forgot to tell you. There's a map in the cabin, in case you get lost. Lost? Me? Bon voyage! Can I help you? Hello. Here's today's mail. 
Mm, new in town. Your face looks familiar. Well, I grew up here and then left for college 22 years ago. <sighs> 22 years ago, back when they called me Nancy Sinatra instead of Nancy Reagan. So now you're back, huh? I know what it's like. You do? It's best not to feel bad about it. Only a few people ever really make it. I wonder if it's gonna rain today. It's been raining a lot lately. People love to browse the shop and then not buy anything. remember this is the old Sugarman place, but the envelope says McGill. Must have moved away. Actually enjoying this. Ah, the mighty Ambrose River.
Well, hello there, big cuddly guy. Genevieve, a new mailman. Hello there. What's your name then? Hi, Miss Jenkins, right? I'm Meredith. Meredith Weiss? Weiss, of course. You're Emily's girl, aren't you? This is Meryl Weiss, Genevieve. She used to live in town years and years ago. Twenty-two years, to be exact, but who's counting? <laughs> Has it been that long? That's almost oh, two Genevieves ago. <coughs> Calm down, Genevieve. You're going to live forever. She isn't, but shh. You do remember me, don't you? How could I forget Miss Mildred Jenkins? And her cats, of course. Seems like they've multiplied. Yes, I do like cats. Is that such a crime? So what if I have slightly more of them than I used to? Like Genevieve here, and Thomas, and Oliver. Anyway, did you have a package for me then? Yes, ma'am. I think it's a toy bear. I mean, it's shaped like one and feels plushy. Someone must think you need another animal in your life. Hmm. Bit of a nosy posy, aren't you? I know Frank would never feel up the packages. I apologize. I didn't mean to pry, Miss Jenkins. Hmm. Well, it's probably another gift from my son. Still doing everything to get into my good graces, except actually drop by. I'm sure he means well. He's probably just busy. Hmm. That's what he says. That's probably what you say to poor Emily, too. Anyway, I won't keep you any longer. Run along, dear. Give Emily my best. Goodbye, Miss Jenkins. Genevieve. In a few days, I won't even need that map. heavier than I thought. Hi there. I've got some mail for this address. You're not Frank. Luckily, I don't think a mustache would suit me. 
Haha, <laughs> <laughs> real funny. But that doesn't explain why Frank gave you the keys for the goose. The goose? Yes, your white and wobbly van, duh. I'm Lori, I'm Providence Oaks mechanic. And I'm the one who keeps the goose running. Aren't you a little young to be a mechanic? My father has been teaching me since the day I was born. There is no one better in P.O. than me. And I have to get back to work now. But I suppose you may drive the goose. On one condition. If there's ever anything wrong with it, you bring it back to me, yes? All right. All right, I promise. Good. Perfect. Uh, did Frank tell you about the radio? No. It currently only receives the local station. Plus, sometimes it cuts out altogether. If that happens, just give it a big old bang on the dashboard and that should fix it right up. I'm working on it, I promise. Okay. Thanks, Lori. No problem, Miss W. Remember, if there's anything wrong with the goose, I can fix it. Right, Bear Creek, near the old lumber yard. There's a new face. A rare sight for a secluded lumberjack? <laughs> yeah. Last time I saw a human being was about six years ago. <laughs> I am here to deliver mail, and I come in peace. I'm Meredith. Thank you. I'm Robert. I hope the peace will be everlasting. Let's see what's inside. Oh, what the... That doesn't sound good. That's what it sounds like. Bullcrap. Freshly baked bullcrap. Hey, the sound can't be worse than the smell. I'm sorry, but I have to take a better look at this. Have a nice day.
Open up the window I'm breathing in the last of September I can feel the wind blow And the late summer sky is like a giant I was a little child Every year for as long as I remember All the leaves were running wild Going all the way until November Turn the world Stan's Diner. Wait, it's called Moe's Diner now? Meredith Wise? As I live and breathe. Come here, hon. Uh, now, let me look at you. My, oh my, a few lines here and there, and the occasional gray hair. But by gosh, it's you, all right. Well, hello to you too, Maureen. Oh, don't be like that now. It suits you. Age only makes a person more distinguished, is what I always say. To the mirror. Now come here. Tell me everything. Okay, one quick drink then. I know you're busy, huh? Little Bird told me all about your temporary mail job already. News goes around pretty quickly around here. So, coffee? Something stronger? I warn you. I will not take no for an answer. <laughs> it's like I'm 17 again, Maureen. In that case, you're welcome, honey. Two coffee, coming right up. And one piece of blueberry pie, if I remember correctly. You had one almost every afternoon after school at one point. Oh, you know me too well, Maureen. Always have, always will. Ashley, one blueberry pie. All right, I'm just around the front of the And Ashley, uh, could you keep an eye on the bar for me for a bit? I'm gonna take my break now. You're a real trooper. Ashley? Oh, sweet Mary, what are you doing? Uh, is everything okay, hon? Oh, Lord have mercy. Maybe you should check that out. Honest? 
Seriously? First the roof and now this? Ugh. That poor kid is like a disaster magnet. I'm sorry, Meredith. Looks like I've got my hands full for a bit. Next time, I want to hear everything, you hear? Uh, don't be a stranger now. Getting the hang of it yet? Check your map, get packages from the back hatch, and be sure to park your van right back here at the office when you're done. Easy as pie. Hello? Hi, Meredith. It's Mom. How are you? How's the job? Hi, Mom. I'm doing great. It's so relaxing to be outside and drive around. Oh, that's great to hear. Dad says it's strange not having to drive the truck anymore. I can imagine that. How is Dad? Can he handle all this freedom? Ugh, don't get me started. He went on two fishing boat trips already. And then there's the late night poker with his new buddies. Oh, I'm almost out of coins. I'm calling from a bar and Dad's ordering a margarita again. <laughs> Talk soon. <laughs> Hmm, let's see what's on TV tonight. Previously on Bon Appetit. 
Has anyone seen Henri? Yeah, he's in the kitchen, unpacking the new tableware. Henri! Did someone call me? Providence Oaks. We're starting the day as we always do with a PO positive or pet feed, followed by the weather. Want to get a piece right now? Now, but the weather's first. We'll start off sunny with a few clouds later today. Welcome to the Flick Shack. How can I help you? Got a package for you, ma'am. Hold on. You're our new postal worker? Talk about not looking the part. <laughs> is that a compliment? Trust me, it definitely is. Well, thank you then. Name's Meredith, by the way. Meredith Weiss. Angie, Eastman. So, what brings you to Providence Oaks? Grew up here, and now I'm back to do my dad a favor. Ah, I myself have been here for six years. And what brings you here? Didn't grow up here, came to do myself a favor. Hmm. Touché, Mrs. Eastman. Miss. So your dream was to rent out videotapes? Not a dream, per se. More like a vision. Figured in a sleepy town like this, people don't have much to do anyways. Might as well watch a flick, right? Mm, you certainly have a lot of them. Choice is everything. Nothing quite tickles the imagination like the right movie at the right time. Hmm, maybe I should watch more movies. Well, it was nice meeting you, Miss Eastman. But call me Angie. And here, someone just returned this, and it should be right up your alley. The postman always rings twice? <laughs> My kind of humor. Well, I don't know anything else about you, Mrs. Temporary Postal Worker. <laughs> Miss. But touche, Angie. All right. I'll check it out if I have the time. Take your time. This isn't exactly the most popular flick in the shack. And there's plenty of choice, regardless. Okay. Well, it was nice meeting you, Miss Angie. Same here, Miss Meredith. Got an invincible fence letting everyone know not to trespass. But you found a breakdown down to lose. Found to get knocked right out of your boots. And now you found witchcraft.
On earth did these folks order? Commander Grace, we have established communication with ground control. How do you wish to proceed? Tell them we've landed the rocket! Ground control, we have landed the rocket! We will now begin our experiments! Um, package for the Evans family? Just a minute! Commander Grace, permission to explore? Permission granted! Yep, we're the Evans family. Could I just take that real quick? I'm kind of in the middle of a lunar landing. Sure. Here you go. <laughs> nice helmet, by the way. Why, thank you. I actually modeled it on the Apollo 11 crew outfit. Wait. What? <laughs> Meredith? Buzz Aldrin? <laughs> um, I'm sorry. Who are you? What? For real? You don't recognize your old best friend when you see her? Wait a minute. Kay? Great. And now I busted my colander. I knew opening the door in this thing was a bad idea. I'm sorry. I didn't recognize you with the colander thing. The helmet. Yeah, clearly. But it seems I'm not the only one who came in disguise. Got me there. You've lived in Providence Oaks all this time? Don't sound so surprised. But yes, I married Barry. Evans, I'm sure you remember our high school star quarterback. Mom! Be right there, Commander Grace! Scanning for alien life forms. That's my little scientist back there. She's crazy about space travel, as you may have guessed, even after the whole Challenger thing. You married Quarterberry? And had kids? I had no idea. Well, obviously a lot can happen in 22 years. So... I guess so. So, I heard you were back in town for a while. From Maureen. That's right. I ran into her yesterday at the diner. kitchen caught fire, so your Uncle Stan is gonna have a field day. Nope. It's Moe's diner now. Like I said, a lot of things happened while you were away. Also, I work there now. 
at the diner. That's great. Maybe I'll drop by sometime. Yeah, we'll see. Ready for a liftoff! Listen, I'm sorry, but I don't really have time for this right now. Can't get stuck on the moon on my own, and I have to get ready for work. See you around, Em. <laughs> Good to see you, Kay. Evans! <laughs> Commander Grace, hold up! You'll never guess what I just found. You can say that again. Walking in your garden Knowing what you're dreaming of Past the copper statues Of everyone you've ever loved Lower down the bridge and let me Same handwriting as the one I delivered next door. I'm guessing party invitations? Mom and Dad have new neighbors. Siegler, huh? Don't think they ever mentioned them.
Admiral, dear. So glad you could come by. Oh, it's quite the emergency. What's wrong, Miss Jenkins? It's poor little Mortimer. He's fallen ill, I think. One minute he was full of life, the next he, well, he just wasn't. He's almost catato- Sorry, heard it when I said it. <laughs> Please, Meredith, be a dear and take poor Mortimer to Mr. Mackey. He runs the bait shop by the lake. He'll know what to do. Sure, I'll get right on it. Here, little kitty, come on. Wonderful! Be nice to Meredith Mortimer. Don't shed too much hair in her van now. Bye, Miss Jenkins. Bye, Meredith. See you soon, Mortimer. Here's your mail.
on earth do these folks order? Sir, parcel for you. Um, I hope I'm not disturbing, but here's a parcel for you. One minute, I'm busy. If you could just accept the parcel and let me be on my way. Is that a parcel for me? No, it's for Bigfoot. You can just put it on the counter. You're welcome. to think our Spanner Dam was just as big and famous as Hoover Dam. Then I visited Hoover Dam.
Mr. Mackey, I know you're closed, but... What? I'm Meredith Weiss. Yeah, yeah, Meredith Weiss. Thomas kid. I remember you running around the lake when you were yay high, getting into all sorts of trouble. What can I do you for? Mildred Jenkins tells me you know a lot about animals, and, well... Oh, hi there, little fellow. What's your name? Apparently it's Mortimer. Well, pleased to meet you, Mort. Hmm, he's a little sluggish. Has Millie been feeding him cupcakes again? Cupcakes? I hope not. <sighs> Leave him with me. I'll put him on a diet today. Maybe even catch him a fish if they're biting. With any luck, he should be up and running in the morning. Thank you, sir. By the way, how are you? I'm fine, I'm fine. You go back to running around that lake, Miss Weiss. Okay. Bye, Mr. Mackey. Bye, Mortimer. Meredith, hi. Oh, hi, Steve. How are you? Busy as two peas. Added 87 is really getting there. Hey, listen, you've got plenty of time, right? I guess, but that's nice for a change. Awesome, I need a favor. I sent a bunch of files your way. It's the retail pitch for Added 87. It's good, but not great. It needs your magic. Do you think you can... Add it? Huh? <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. How many pages are we talking about here? It's not much. It's just the pitch, and there's also an instruction booklet. Can't be more than a hundred pages. I could just send it to your post office, right? I guess. Awesome. Mail back to me as soon as possible. Priority mail. Thanks so much. Oh, I gotta run. Okay, Steve. Oh, one final thing. Now let this marinate. <clears throat> add it, 87. Add anything you like. It's fancy, right? Yeah, don't, don't tell me now. Uh, I got a jet. Bye. Let's watch this. Oh, Steve's parcel. And a note from Tess. Hey, Em. Hope you're doing well. Steve told me you'd want to read through this monstrosity. Not sure if you really said that, but have a great time there anyways. Take care. Tess.
Good morning, P.O. It's time for a P.O. Positive or that P. Hey folks, let's see what it is today. The floor is yours, Angie. Good morning, Jack. I've got a pet peeve. Returned videos that have not been rewinded. I mean, really? Be kind and rewind. Thanks. Duly noted, Angie. And now, on to today's weather. Hello again. More mail for me? And the tape you gave me. Oh, wow. You watched it already? A drifter in a sleepy town, an affair, and a plot to kill a husband? There's a lot more to this movie than I expected. It's a classic, and probably my favorite noir. They did a remake a couple years back, but it's, well... It's not as good. You can't beat Lana Turner's smoldering intensity. Yeah, she's great in it. I'm so glad you liked it. Most of the people here don't really appreciate the art of classic cinema. They just want to see Police Academy again. I'm afraid you're right. Pretty lonely, being the only movie buff around. You seem to enjoy being the expert, though. Are you saying I feel superior to these rubes? Because... <laughs> I guess I do a little. You know, it's good to see you. Any particular reason? Because I have a sneaky little plan. Oh, we're whispering now? I want you to meet me, say, at, at five today. What? Like a date? <laughs> well, more like a business proposal. You in? All right. I'm in. Hurrah! I'll see you this afternoon. Wait, where are we meeting up? Your place. It's 102 New Street, right? Yes. How did you find that out? Looked up your last name in the Rolodex? Your parents are regular clients. Oh, well. It's settled then. See you at five, partner.
Here's your mail.
There's a face I remember. Hi, Robert. Hey there. More paperwork with my name on it? Well, take a look for yourself. Thanks. Oh, it gets worse every day. More bullcrap? Can you believe it? I've been taking care of this lakeside for years. And now they're gonna bulldoze it and build apartments. Oh, that's a shame. I'd hate to see the place I grew up ruined by an apartment building. What? You grew up here? Yes, my father was the mailman before me. Mr. Weiss. Ah, oh, so you're the prodigy he's always talking about. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me. But tell me about that paperwork. They say you can file an official objection, but I'm not a great match with bureaucracy. I'd rather get the chainsaw and cut down Town Hall. Nothing a chainsaw can't handle. <laughs> Just kidding. It's a nice thought, though. Well... Maybe I can help out. I'm better with paper than chainsaws. Would you? Awesome. I'll think about it. Have a great day. Bye, Robert. Hey, wait up. I'm done thinking about it. Maybe you'd want to go through all the files... together? Tomorrow afternoon? At Moe's? Food and drinks on me. Mmm, sure. Who can say no to food and drinks at Moe's? Awesome. I'll see you there then. I'll bring all the paperwork. Okay. Bye.
Nope. No answer. There you go. Maureen? Hi, hon. How are you doing this fine day? I'm fine, but how are you? You know, with the kitchen exploding? Oh, that? <laughs> Nothing a fresh lick of paint and a mop couldn't fix. Doesn't mean to scare you. <laughs> Let's pick up where we left off, shall we? And one piece of blueberry pie? Ashley, one blueberry pie. Meredith Wise, back in Providence Oaks. How's life treating you, darling? It's all right, actually. I delivered a package to Kay at her house earlier. Yes, she told me. How did that go for you? I think it went okay. I can imagine it can be a lot to take in. For the both of you, especially after being away for so long. Then again, there are some things that never change, right? You being one of them. <laughs> I will take that as a compliment. But I bet the diner looks a bit strange to you, doesn't it? I like what you did with the place. Yeah, I decided it was time for a change. Didn't feel the same after my stand died. World keeps turning. Gotta keep moving along with it, right? Oh my gosh, Maureen, Stan died? I'm so sorry, I, I had no idea. Thank you, darling. But it's really okay. It's been 10 years already. Ten and a half, almost. Oh, boy, did I love that man. Oh, we'd been married for so long. It hit me like a brick. But after a while, I decided that sadness wasn't the only emotion I was allowed to have. That's not what Stan would have wanted either. That's really inspiring. Thank you, hon. I do appreciate that. Anyway, you have to get back up. So I did. For me, but also for Kay. She took her uncle's death pretty hard. I can imagine that. <sighs> Sorry for dumping all that on you like that, darling. Gosh, <laughs> look at your face. I'm a bit surprised you didn't know. Didn't your parents tell you about it? Or Kay? I'm not sure. Oh, it's okay, hon. I honestly don't give a hoot about any blame game. We all have our lives to live, but Kay's been through a lot. <sighs> Nursed her uncle through his illness, helping me out. I think seeing you again shook her up a little, is all. She must have missed you during those days. I can imagine.
It was good to see her again. I've missed her too. Then, it sounds like you know what to do. Listen, Meredith. Time marches on. And eventually, you realize it's marching across your face. Life's too short. That's exactly why I decided this place could do with a repurpose after Stan passed. Fresh start. It's been Moe's Diner ever since. And believe it or not, business is better than ever. That's great to hear, Maureen. Congratulations. Why, thank you kindly. And listen, you check in with me and Kay again soon, you hear? Don't forget about what's important in life. Hand on my heart, I will return as soon as I have a delivery. Or sooner. Huh? I'll hold you to that. You bet. Bye, Maureen. Everything is turning into gold. When the autumn leaves are playing chases, puts a smile up on my face. They leave their branches one by one and whirl around there just for fun. Some are faster, some are slow. Hi there, Mr. Mackey. How's Mortimer? Oh, good day, Meredith. Mort's fine, as I expected. It was just a little indigestion. A good night's rest and a bit of lake trout in the morning has done the little critter a world of good. Excellent. Miss Jenkins will be pleased. Let me take him off your hands. All right. Bye, Mort. Anything else, Miss Weiss? Enjoying yourself so far? I'm having fun, yes. Well, that's good. I'm guessing I'll see you around a lot more, Miss Weiss. For sure, Mr. Mackey. Have a nice day.
Look who's back. Mortimer! Oh, look at you! You're good as new! Sure is. He was just a little tired, I guess. Well, whatever it was, I'm sure Bert took great care of him. And so did you, Meredith. Thank you so much. My pleasure. See you, Miss Jenkins. Call me Mildred, dear. Say goodbye to Meredith, Mortimer. No, Angie Eastman, you can't really create a woman with a computer. What movie is that? It's called Weird Science. You really haven't heard of it? It was a pretty big hit. I figured you, with your computer background... All right, I'll add it to the huge mental list I've been compiling ever since we started talking. So that's Weird Science, Life of Python... <laughs> <laughs> Brian. Brian. Monty Python's Life of Brian. Right. <laughs> you know, you don't really look the part of a computer nerd, either. Well, I'm off duty. For a while. Good for you. So... Any particular reason you're not at the Nerd Factory anymore? Let's just say I needed a change of scenery. Okay, well, I totally get wanting something different, anyway. I used to live in Los Angeles. Oh, really? Then, yeah. Providence Oaks is pretty different. <laughs> Sure is. It's quieter, for one thing. Slower, for another. Yeah, those are the two things I like best about it. Me too, I think. It took some getting used to. So tell me about this plan of yours. Is the suitcase part of it? Oh, right. It's simple. I want you to distribute movies all over Providence Oaks. You mean, for free? Yeah. You know the town, you're starting to know the people. Not all of them have VCRs yet, but that's why God invented movie boxes. And by God, I mean electronics companies. Look! It's a VCR in a box, and it's portable too, so you can take it to anyone. Wow, this is the future of entertainment. I've made a list of potential customers and the movies I think they'll like. All you have to do is just deliver the movie box with a movie of their choice. Then you go and pick it back up once they've watched it. Okay, but what's the revenue model here? Oh, you! Not Everything is about money. It's about promoting the store. Which, I guess, is ultimately about money. Here, I'll give you these two to start. These are for Lori. You know her, right?
The mechanic girl at the gas station, right? Yes, good. I have these two for her. The love bug and a nightmare on Elm Street. This one is about murders in a bathtub, right? Well, not exactly. You'll just have to watch it. But not before Lori gets a chance. I think she'll love it. After Lori gives back the box, I have a couple movies planned for Burt Mackey. They are Jaws and The Dirty Dozen. And that's it for now. If you're in, that is. So, you in? All right. These addresses seem to be on my route anyway. I'm in. All right. Thanks a bunch, babe. Now, do you have any more of this great coffee? Actually, I really need to head back. Oh, what's the rush? I left the store unattended. Better get back. Oh, just have another cup of coffee? I'd love to, but I really can't. Thursday's usually one of the busiest days. Sorry, but I'll see you soon, okay? Bye, babe. Hello? Hey, Meredith. Hey, Dad! How's life? I heard something about poker, fishing, and margaritas. <laughs> Talk to Mom, huh? But yeah, can't complain. How about you? Do you like my job? I'm starting to love it. Being on the road, the freedom, the people. That's great to hear. Frank's quite the character, huh? Frank's quite the character indeed. Is he married? Frank married? Yes, to baseball. He places a bet every now and then. Nothing too serious. And what about Bert Mackey? Bert. Uh, Bert doesn't like to talk much. But he's got a heart of gold. Stay on his good side. Speaking of staying on the good side, your mom's telling me to hurry up. We're going to a movie. Okay, Dad, don't keep her waiting. What movie? Uh, Stand By Me. Uh, about four Oregon boys in the 50s. Right up my alley. Sounds good. Say hi to Mom for me. Will do. Bye, Meredith. Previously on Bon Appetit. How's the beef bug in your coming along? I'm not sure, boss. But Henri, it's been cooking for hours. I am Jean-Paul. Henri is my twin brother.
Here's the mail, ma'am. Ugh, one of those yellow parcels. Isn't yellow the color of fun and happiness? It's for that thing behind the door, a photography mini lab. They installed it last week and they want me to operate it. As if I don't have enough on my plate already. That's pretty nice, actually. I love photography. Some people think they can become professional photographers overnight. Well, photography can be just for fun, too, right? Look, if you want to take photographs, knock yourself out. They want me to practice with the mini lab before the service is officially offered. They sent me a practice kit with the camera and film. Really? I'd love to take pictures. The surroundings here are wonderful. Well, here you go, and good luck. Take some pictures and then return it to me. Have a nice day, ma'am. Interesting.
Ooh, interesting.
Wait, where's the package? What on earth did these folks order? Miss W, you got some mail for me today? No, but I have something else. Angie from the Flick Shack asked me to deliver some movie boxes. She also asked me to deliver some to you. Oh, tight. What are the options? Let me see. The Love Bug or A Nightmare on Elm Street. You'll probably love that bug. I'm almost 16, Miss W. That's a kid's movie. Well, I watched it when I was in college. So you're saying it's an ancient kid's movie. Hey, I'm not that old. So you'll pick A Nightmare on Elm Street? Give me the love bug. I thought you didn't want that one. Ugh, I don't. But if my parents catch me watching Elm Street, they'll drown me for a week. I wish they'd just take a chill pill and see that I'm basically an adult. I fix cars. Oh, no, that's too bad, Lori. Maybe you can watch it at a friend's house instead. No, I'm homeschooled. There aren't many teenagers here, as you may have noticed. So I don't really have any friends to watch it with. So it's a love bug for me. Tell you what, take the love bug now and we'll watch the horror movie at my place. Would Sunday work for you? What? Really? Yes, it would. That'd be wicked, Miss W. Of course. I'm always in for a good fright. So, see you Sunday? Totally. Thanks so much. Deal. Have a nice day. Okay, delivery for the diner. Hey, Meredith. Sure, just uh, put it on the counter, would you? 
Okay, about the other day. What about it? How did things end up with the moon landing? Actually, I got stuck on the moon. But then I took a really big jump for the rocket and got back on board just in time. Grace voiced a few objections regarding the scientific accuracy of that move, but hey. <laughs> Grace sounds like a great kid. Yep. So... I talked to Maureen. Let me guess. You got a piece of Maureen's wisdom too, eh? Why doesn't that surprise me? That explains why she wanted me to take over today's shift, then. She told me about Uncle Stan. I'm so sorry. Thanks. It was a long time ago, but I appreciate it. It's not the same without him. I'm sorry I wasn't there. For you and Maureen. That's kind of you to say, Meredith. I mean, I didn't contact you about it at the time, but then again, I had kind of given up by then. Honestly, I was so overwhelmed back then. With university, then work, you know. I get it. There's always a reason for things to go the way they do. Even so, it never seems to be the right reason. Time marches on. What did Maureen always say about that again? One day you realize... It's, it's marching, marching across, across your across face! Your face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mo. Some things never change. You say that like it's a good thing. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Em. It was good to talk, I mean, you know. Yeah, it was. I have to get back to it, but see you around, maybe? I'm sure. See ya.
here. Hello, sir. I reckon that's a parcel with my name on it. I reckon your name is Jack Reynolds? Indeed I am. And I reckon you're the new postal worker? Indeed I am. Well, thank you much. New around here, I reckon. People call me JR. I'm a farmer and DJ. I'm Meredith. Nice to meet you. DJ and farmer? That's a rare combo. Indeed it is. But it's a nice distraction from farming. I've seen better times. I had some spare time and a room in the shed, so I figured, why not? About your playlist. It's really nice. Thanks, but I really need to add more songs. But I'm in the middle of a potato harvest. Don't have much time. Hey, listen, postal worker Meredith, I need to get back to work. Can you do me a favor and give this envelope to Frank? Sure, no problem. Thank you so much.
Well now, Meredith and Robert. Welcome to Moe's. Table for two? Hi, Maureen. Yes, please. A quiet one, if possible. We've got work to do. Is that what they're calling it now? Speaking of work, Robert, someone reckoned they could fix the roof themselves and, uh, <clears throat> made it worse somehow. I mean, foot just went right through. No physical harm, thankfully. The roof! Yes, I promise to take a look at it. Uh, let me check out the damage real quick. Be right back. Thanks, darling. Hm, sure is one of the good ones right there. He seems very nice, but I haven't actually talked to him longer than ten minutes. What's time got to do with anything? You know what you want when you see it, hon. Oh, Maureen, please. What do you take me for? For a human being, of course. Don't go telling me city life turned you into a robot now. I don't buy it for a second. Anyway, let me show you to my nicest table. I hear the sun hits your face in all the right places here. Okay, so what you're saying is there's a couple of things we can do, but no chainsaws. Definitely no chainsaws, for the moment. It's just that the remaining options will take time, effort, and patience. Well, that's one out of three for me. Can I get you lovebirds? Anything else? Maureen, really? I could always decide not to fix your roof today, you know? Don't worry, Robert. I know Maureen. I'm sure she doesn't mean anything by it. <laughs> I could go for a glass of red wine, Maureen. Gotcha, hun. Robert? The same for me, please. Sure thing. Back in a jiff. Ashley! Did we get that wine order in last week? <laughs> they what? Glad we're finally done for today. But there's more to come. I'm sure you'll do fine. Thanks, but you don't sound very convincing. To be honest, you probably need some extra help. Is that an offer? Yeah, sure. Okay, you two hard-working individuals, here you go. Thanks, Maureen. Cheers. So? How's life in P.O. so far? It's only been a week, but... So far, so good. Yeah, I've been here a bit longer. Time sure does fly. I'm sure you must have some good stories. Yeah, uh, look, Meredith, I'm sorry. I really better get started on fixing that roof. It's just, uh, that's quite a big job. While it's still light out and all, you know. So, thanks so much for your help. I mean, I really do appreciate it. Drive home safe. Uh, I'll see you around town. So, yeah, I'll see you. Everything okay over here? Yeah. I guess. I, I'm not sure. Good day. My name is Walter Morgan. I'm from the Postal Service. I'm calling with regards to compliance to policies and guidelines, such as the use of Postal Service property, code of conduct, and so on. I will be in touch again soon. Meredith, it's Steve. Oh, hi, Steve. Hey, uh, I'm calling about the priority mail. Uh, didn't receive it. Uh, any idea what's going on? Oh, 
Oh, snap. I'm so sorry. I forgot all about it. You? Forgetting something? Did, did hell just freeze over? It must be the change of setting. Life here is so different. Go. Okay. Hmm. Well, uh, yeah, well, don't worry about it, Meredith. I'm sure you'll be the normal and awesome Meredith again soon. And I, I really need you. We're super close to signing a monster deal. I understand, Steve. Good luck. Thanks, Meredith. I'll keep you posted. Get it? Uh, 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 okay, uh, yeah, bye. Previously on Bon Appetit. I have good news. Jean-Paul has agreed to become the chef of the downtown restaurant. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> Rock and roll. There is only one problem. Jean-Paul is not a cook, but a car technician. Good morning, Meredith. It's an envelope today with an incomplete address on it. It only says Mickey in June, Lake Campground, Providence Oaks. Do you think you can find that? I think I know where that is. All right. Have a great day. Thanks. Oh, by the way, Frank, I wanted to ask you something. I will not babysit Mildred's cats. <laughs> no. It's about something else. What's in those envelopes for you? Oh, that's just for stamps. Saves them the hassle of driving up here. Hey, I gotta get back to work. Catch you later. to start the weekend, or will it be a positive? Tina Banks has the answer. Jack, I've had this pet peeve for years. We've got a beautiful lake and a nice boulevard, but why don't we have one of those coin-operated binoculars? I like the idea, Tina. Hmm. Let's take a closer look at today's... ...weather now. A few clouds, but nothing but sunny skies in the end. Answer.
I'll leave it on the doorstep. Did you watch The Love Bug? Hey, Miss W. Yes, I did, and I guess I liked it. You don't have to hide it from me, Lori. You can say you loved it. I guess it wasn't bad. It was really fun, actually. See? Ancient isn't all bad. You still ready for Sunday? I have never been more ready. It's going to be rad. Yeah, totally tubular, right? Uh, sure, Miss W. See you Sunday! Here's the mail. Thanks, Meredith. And, um, sorry for leaving all of a sudden yesterday. Yeah, what was that all about? Well, it was just... I needed some space. I think I've gotten a bit too used to being on my own. Was I such bad company? No, no, not at all. I, I really enjoyed it. I just don't want you to feel weird about it. I was the weirdo. There's nothing wrong with a little weirdness. I just wanted you to know that. Anyways, let's see what's in the mail. The dentist appointment. Wait, why am I sharing that with you? So, no news regarding those apartments? Nothing. Hallelujah. This gives me a bit more peace of mind to work on my wildcard plan. 
wild card plan? Wild card plan. Yes. Also highly confidential. Oh, come on. I won't tell a soul. Yeah, but no. Maybe later. It's still work in progress. Okay. Good luck with that. Thanks. I remember Dad telling me, Meredith, the picnic area is for the older kids. I think I was 17 when I had my first actual picnic here. Hello there. Hey, how are you? I may have mail for you. Is it addressed to Mickey or June? Or both? Uh, to both. Here you go.
Oh, sweet brother Damien, savior in the hour of darkness. Never mind him. He's a bit stressed out. We were a bit low on paper. Nice to meet you. What's your name? I'm Meredith. Nice to meet you, too. Woo! What kind of paper? Probably a bit of cash and some rolling paper. Ah, that kind of paper. <laughs> no harm in that. Amen, sister. Thanks for the delivery. You're welcome. So, are you guys on vacation? Sort of. Although, I guess you need a job for a vacation. Joan! Can you get in here, please? Now! Oh, that's my cue. It was nice meeting you, sweet Meredith. Can you, like, not tell the authorities your whole life story? Hi, Angie. Oh, hey. So, hey, I dropped off and picked up those movies. Right, right. Is everything okay? 
you don't seem your usual peppy self. You don't know me, Meredith, okay? This can be a stressful job. Oh, easy there. I just did you a favor, remember? Yeah, actually, now's not a great time. There's two more movies on the counter. If you could deliver those, that'd be peachy. Hmm. Jaws and The Dirty Dozen. I'm on it. Don't you worry your pretty little head about it. Mm-hmm. Great. Thanks. Appreciate it. Bye. Mr. Mackey, I've got this movie box for you. Leave it on the porch of the cabin, could ya? I need to know if you prefer a war movie or a shark movie. Huh? Movies? Uh, just pick something. I'm sure it'll be fine. All right. Jaws it is. Have a nice day. I wouldn't be surprised if we got another Lakers-Celtics matchup in the finals.
myself a job well in Chicago It's not too much to go on but I'll make it fine Ooh, still anything's better than just hanging around, yeah Stop dragging your heart around, baby Stop It's me, Kay. <laughs> wow, I just like instantly dialed your parents' number. Superpowers! <laughs> Probably just muscle memory or something like that, right? Or maybe it's like that thing where you smell something and it instantly triggers this mega old memory you didn't even know you had. Know what I mean? Oh man, I had that once when Barry bought me lilacs and the smell instantly mentally teleported me to when I was like six years old and fell out of a tree. And I ended up with all this lilac smelling tree gunk all over my face. You remember that, right? What if it's like that with old phone numbers? You go, must dial M, and then your brain just triggers your fingers to dial? Man. Anyway, I uh, didn't call about that, obviously. I was thinking of maybe taking a stroll around the lake this Sunday, clear my head, and then Maureen suggested maybe you'd like to tag along. Not that I'm asking because of Maureen, of course. Just thought it might be fun to check out the old hangouts and the lake sites and all. If you do want to join, I'll be at the watchtower overlooking the lake at 11 a.m. Sunday. I'll probably hang around a bit, so I'll see you when I see you. Sunday morning watchtower. Be there or be square. The Countess and the Carpenter? <laughs> really, Mom? Oh, well, let's give it a read. The Countess and the Carpenter. Chapter 1. A more disastrous entry to her new home was scarcely imaginable for Cecilia Schultenbrow. The left wheel of her carriage collapsed, right as she entered through the gates of the magnificent Raubenstauben estate. She tumbled upside down, hurt her head, and worse, her hat was ruined. Suddenly, she heard the deep, strong voice of a young man. Are you all right, madam? Should I just come up? Come on up! You just have to watch your step on the third leg. Should be good. I completely got what you just said, and I'm coming up. Good to see you. <laughs> so glad you made it. Isn't it nice up here?
Brings back memories, doesn't it? Any memory in particular you're thinking of? Those times we took some pie up from the diner after school and sat here talking about whatever we felt like. Oh, yeah. How about that afternoon I snuck in some beers from Uncle Stan and they were really disgusting and you puked all over the rail? In fact, wasn't it kind of where you're standing right now? Oh my gosh, it totally was. up, I seem to remember it was closer to where you're standing, like exactly where your hands are now. Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you're back. I kind of missed having you around. I feel the same way. So, what's life been like for you since you left? Positives? Negatives? You know, I went to university, got a job. I basically worked my butt off the entire time. That's both positive and negative, I guess. Oof. That doesn't sound like a sustainable life plan there. You okay? Yeah, it just, it gets a bit busy sometimes. Mm, I can imagine Providence Oaks is less complicated. Well, maybe it is, and maybe it isn't. Ooh, that sounds juicy. Is this about something or someone? I'm glad we can have these adult conversations now. Oh, there she goes with the crazy eyes. M still stands for mind your own beeswax, I see. <laughs> all right, all right, I'm backing off. What about you? How have you been? I mean, really? Really, really? It's been great and it's been tough. You know, I guess it's like that for everyone. I mean, I wanted to go to art school, yes, but turns out I wasn't good enough, or at least that's what they told me when I applied. So I decided to stay and do my own thing, make music, perform and stuff, you know. I picked up some shifts at the diner, Barry and I reconnected, got married, and then Max came along. You haven't met him yet, have you? He turns 13 in a few months. Time flies. Anyway, having Max gave things a different rhythm, but I still continued with my music. Even managed to get a bit of a buzz going in Portland. Lined up a few interesting gigs. Tough to balance, but fun. Sounds like you were ready to leave P.O. at that point. Yeah, just like that, Uncle Stan got sick hit him and Aunt Mo like a ton of bricks. It was crushing. There I was, just about to get somewhere with my music, but I just couldn't let them down. So I stayed, helped out nursing Uncle Stan, picked up his shifts at the diner. Where was Barry in all this? Barry was actually really great. We divided tasks back at the house and he took care of Uncle Stan when he could. No questions asked. He was just there. Sounds like you really stepped up. Well, in hindsight, it was a lot. In the moment, though, you don't stop to think. You just do it. And what now? Well, Mo has offered a couple of times to put my name above the door at the diner. Up until now, it felt like too much. Too soon. Too definitive. But I don't know. Maybe if she asks again, I'll think about it.
The way things ended up, it may not have been part of my master plan, but I got to spend some of the most precious moments of my life with the most precious people I know. Got to say goodbye to Uncle Stan and be there for Mo. They basically raised me. I'm grateful I got to do that for them. And I built a family of my own, right here in good old P.O. And one day, those kids will hurl all over this rail, just like we did. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, it's been tough, but looking back, I wouldn't trade any of it for the world. Oh, that's so great, Kay. I'm glad at least one of us grew up to be a well-rounded individual. Is there a manual I can borrow? Well, after you left, I had to raise myself, didn't I? <sighs> so, ready to descend to the world below? I think I'll stick around. Enjoy the view some more. <laughs> the view from the top of the ivory tower. Be careful not to get too used to it, young lady. Hmm. Okay. Thanks for the invite. I'm glad I came by. Just try to cut down the word count on the answering machine next time, would you? Oh, you better buy yourself some new tapes for your machine, Weiss. Just kidding. <laughs> you know how I get when I get nervous. Thanks for joining, Em. This was... Good. Hello? You are speaking to Monster Deal Central. How may I help you? Hey, Steve. You're in a good mood? Meredith, please, tell me to calm down. We are so close to a deal. Add it 87, in shops all across America. m m m m m, -m monster deal Oh, wow, that is so awesome! Tell me more! Okay, okay, I met up with this big retailer, right? They read the pitch. They Loved it. And they want to buy 150,000 copies of Added 87. 150,000. Multiply that by like 35 bucks. What? That's millions of dollars of revenue! M -m -m millions! And, and it's just the start. Listen. I've got the contract right here. I'm sending over a copy. You should have it tomorrow. Could you please check it? I really hope I can depend on you this time. I want your blessings before I sign on the dotted line, okay? I'll see what I can do, Steve. Awesome. I'll be in touch again Tuesday evening. I'm so excited, and I just can't hide it. It's official. I love horror movies. A Nightmare on Elm Street is radical. It was amazing! Thank you for watching with me, Miss W. You weren't scared at all? Nope. Told you. Man, I wish my parents would let me watch these movies. I can't wait until I move out. Move out? Aren't you 15 years old or something? Almost 16, and yeah. Don't get me wrong, I love tinkering and I love working in my father's shop, but... It's just so boring sometimes. I want to see more of the world. I want to meet more people. I'm sure you've noticed, but there's not many teenagers here in Providence Oaks. And I'm homeschooled, so I don't have many friends to hang out with either. But what do you want to do after school then? I don't know. My parents want me to work in Dad's shop, but I don't think I want that. And you left when you were younger, so I figured maybe you had some advice for me? Oh. 
Well, maybe. I think... Maybe once you're done with school, you can start traveling. Go out and see the world, like you said you wanted. Meet new people, do new things. Be a free spirit. I think that could be cool too. But I'd have to get my license first. And a car. But I guess I can save up money while I'm working for my dad anyway. And I've always wanted to see the Smithsonian Museum. Oh, oh, or Sequoia National Park in Cali. See? Plenty of stuff just waiting out there for you to come and visit. You have two years left of high school, more than enough time to get your license and save up for a car. You're right, Meredith. Thank you. Also for talking to me and stuff. You're very welcome, Lori. I had a lot of fun tonight. <laughs> me too. I should get home soon. Later, Meredith. Later! Oh, Steve's parcel. And another note from Tess. Hey, Em, here are Steve's contracts. I bet you're in the mood for some light reading. And now without sarcasm, really, I must admit the energy here is contagious. Is Adit actually going to take off? See you soon. Tess. Good morning, Miss Weiss. Uh, good morning, sir. I didn't see you there. The name's Walter Morgan. I'm with the Postal Service. I left you a message on your answering machine earlier this week. Oh? I must have missed it. Miss Weiss, if you could follow me into the office. I would like to ask you a few questions. Are you familiar with the Postal Service policies? To be honest, no. It says in Chapter 11, Section 3, First Paragraph, and I'll paraphrase, it is forbidden to use Postal Service property for personal gain. Oh. Okay, sounds reasonable. Miss Weiss, I'm aware that you've only just begun working here, but I trust that you do not take the responsibilities of a postal worker lightly. No, of course. I mean, uh, yes, sir. The Postal Service puts its employees under the highest level of scrutiny. I advise you to answer the following three questions truthfully. A yes or no will suffice. Do you know Frank Coleman? Yes. Have you ever given him envelopes or received envelopes from him that weren't postmarked? No. Are you aware that Frank Coleman wages bets on baseball games? No. That will be all. Thank you for your cooperation. What's going to happen to Frank? I'm sorry. We can't discuss personnel matters. Good luck with the mail today, Miss Weiss. Mornings, the perfect combo. Pio, positive or pet peeve? 